Wow, look at that water. That is practically blue water. Since we didn't get anything trolling, let's drop this jig down and see if we can catch us a grouper. This is a 300 gram Johnny jigs with twin assist hooks on each side. I'm running a 50 pound mono top shot, about 10 foot of it to a Siegler small game narrow slow pitch reel and a Star Plasma 2. This is a six foot eight inch medium slow pitch rod. Let's get that sucker down and catch us some fish to take home. And my bait uh, to put this rod up because the reel seat's acting up. Now I just have something pretty big <laughs> and I bet that's gonna be an amberjack. Mm. I bet it is. Mm. Oh yeah, that reel feels like it's about to slide back off again. And I have no clue how deep I'm at right now. If I can get this in, that'll be nice. Get my jig back. Well, first of all, find out what it is, then get my jig back. But I'm in a lot of pain right now because I'm gripping onto this reel like crazy because I do not want it to slide off the rod again and go into the gulf. I guess we'll find out what it is. I'm gonna assume it's gonna be an amberjack. It hit when I was reeling my lure in to put this rod up, 60 feet. I see it on my depth finder. Mm. 40, come on. Mm. Yep. Oh no, wow. That's a freaking stud grouper. Is that a gag though? I don't know if that's a gag or not, but I'm gonna have to put that in. That is a stud grouper. I thought that was an amberjack, it's a grouper. Check out the size of that grouper right there. Look at that mouth on the jig. One of these hooks are kind of straightened out. So I put a lot of pressure on them, but that's why it's good to have assist hooks like that multiple because when you're pulling something up this big from 300 foot of water you're going to put a lot of stress on gear but that is an awesome grouper <laughs> on the jig all right y'all we've made it to our spot so i'm going to be throwing a cuda tube let me show you what this is it's a big piece of surgical tubing just like this see it couple weights in there, a couple hooks, a lot of wire leader. I've tied an additional wire leader on top of that. This one's made by Sea Striker. You can make them yourself as well. It's just easier for me to buy them. We're gonna try to catch us a big old barracuda. I think it's gonna be pretty fun. Did this last time I was out here and I said I was gonna come back out here and do it again. I am throwing this on a 6,000 size spinning reel with 30 pound braid. And this is a dark matter IO spinning rod. This is a seven foot three inch model. It is linked down below if you wanna go check them out at jnh.com. They are the sponsor of this video. So let's go ahead and get this lure out there. See if we can hook something pretty fun. Throw this cuta tube. Oh, one's about to chase it. He's about to eat it, come on. <laughs> He's fired up on it. Y'all see that? Let's see if we can do that again. Y'all, there's tons of them. Oh, oh darn, I yanked it away from him. <laughs> Oh, he tried. Oh man, let's try that again. Dang it. Oh, got it. He's got it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was so cool. Oh, I wish I could get a jump out of him. Heck yeah, dude. Wish I could get a jump. Man, that was epic. He didn't quite show off like that other one did, the other video. But this was cool. <sighs> Come on. Mmm. Barracuda. That's what I wanted out here. Wanted to come out, try to get one. They're so ferocious when they hit. Man, I'd love for him to jump. 
but he's just staying kind of down. <sighs> Dude, these things, they're like oversized king mackerel. <laughs> right below the boat. There he is. Whoa, check that out. Feisty things. Such cool, cool experience right there. I'm gonna keep this one. If we can get them close, put a gaff on them. Oh yeah. <laughs> Man, so how epic is this? Wow, they got some armor. How to get it in his gill. Wow, look at that, that was cool. <laughs> I want to step away from him. How epic was that? I got that tube lure out. Oh, Y'all, look at that Cuda. Probably a 25, 26 pounder. Super fun. Didn't get any jumps out of them. They do have some armor plating on them. Very, very, very different than gaffing a king. So I had to get up in his gill. But this is a great Barracuda. See if I can show you his teeth. Be real careful. Can y'all see those? That dude is a predator. Comes through, bites things in half, come back and eats the rest. Look at that. Never cooked one before, never eaten one. I know down in the Caribbean, they can be full of cigarette toxin. A lot of y'all were saying on a few videos ago that they are edible up here. There are not as, not as many cases. So I guess we'll see how it goes. Y'all, we're gonna throw this in our cooler and just try to go get another one, see if one will jump. How awesome is that? Very, very stinky fish. Oh, there's his mouth. See that? Insane teeth. I mean, insane. All right, y'all, that was cool. We got our goal accomplished. Y'all, look at the flame on that sucker coming out. Wow. They don't even look real on camera. That's crazy. <laughs> we have free jumping tuna everywhere right now. I mean, all around us. Check this out. About 20 all the way up to 60 pound tuna just jumping like crazy. We're gonna try to get one on a popper, try to get one on some live bait, see if we can get them to bite. They've been tough. I think it's all a matter of time because they kept popping up behind me. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> it's because I put the camera on you. Yeah. Oh, oh, hey. Got one. I might have to double up with you. Get yeah, back again. again. I gotta get a double up with you. Malik hooked up with the tuna. Where's he at? <sighs> See if we can double up on, on tuna. Yeah, buddy. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Ready? Yep. Yeah, buddy! Heck yeah, man. Good job, man. Got you a tuna. Y'all, we just got a tuna on deck. Heck yeah, dude. I'm going to get one on the popper as well. Have a live bait sitting out. That is so cool. We'll take it. Heck Good yeah. job. Y'all check it out. Big old rig. Big flame. Tuna sky. We're going to see if we can get another one. Pretty cool. Oh, I just marked to the mouth of Fort Morgan and Mobile Bay where we launched. We launched right here. And we have 70.3 miles. That's how far out we are. How crazy is that? Something I don't suggest to everybody to do, even us. But uh, somehow we ended up out here. We didn't catch anything else yet. So we're just got a couple trolling rods and we have 70.2 miles left. We're sitting in 1700 feet of water at this true oil rig, really neat. So we did plan on coming all the way out here, but we did something I don't suggest to just everybody, you know, especially in a bay boat. But it kind of paid off, so we're gonna troll back. Y'all also go check out this new Mossy Oak gear. They've actually partnered with the channel, so I'm wearing the Mossy Oak fishing apparel, the long sleeve shirt. It's been keeping me nice and cool and not sunburned on my arms and back since all day long. They have the shorts, compression shorts, hats. Today I'm wearing my Bama Saltwater hat though, which those are on the website. But Mossy Oak will be linked down below. Oh my 
Y'all, we just left Patronus and we're gonna drop down some jet. What is a trolling motor doing? <laughs> we're gonna drop down some jigs, about 200 feet of water, 250, try to find some AJs. It's crazy, like what a brick wall when you start to pull back on them. Oh my God. Yeah, just good one. Like <laughs> yeah, just like that. I just want to keep his head turned. I hope he's a keeper. Yeah, I hope so. Still pretty. Oh, yeah. That's going to be a good one. I'm going to come on your side. You can get the gaff whenever you're ready. I'm freaking weak. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Come on. I, I'm wearing myself out. <laughs> Y'all, I don't care how I'm fighting this fish. I just want to get it up. <sighs> I'm wore out, bro. <sighs> Those things suck. Yeah, they do. Make you feel like you're about to throw up. <sighs> Hope it's a keeper. I don't say cover. <laughs> no. <laughs> Give it to you, man. <sighs> there we go. That's comfortable. <laughs> Probably shouldn't have thrown it on one of my lightest setups. <laughs> See color yet? We still got a little bit. <laughs> Y'all, I admit I'm a weakling when it comes to this. <sighs> oh, I see color right here. Is it keeper? Here we go. Oh yeah, that's a keeper. Malik's at the gap. Slow and steady. Oh, he's on the boat. Oh yeah, that's a keeper. Slow and steady. Ready? Oh, oh, get under the head. There you go. Bring him. <laughs> Sweet. Yo, that was a wimpy fight, but we got him. We've been out here, what? Oh, eight wow. hours oh wow man thank you bro yeah <laughs> y'all we just got our limit of aj's one a person 34 inches minimum length on the dark matter setup heck yeah it's time for us to go in that is awesome let's go y'all <laughs> we'll see you in a bit y'all check it out got the 24 foot bay boat loaded up got a little bit of a breeze just left we're about to leave one of my absolute favorite places here in the entire state of Alabama, and that's JM Tackle. I just stocked up with some bait, have some ice, got me some food and drinks for the water. This is my 24 foot bay boat, got a Yamaha 250, 85 gallons of fuel, and we're ready to go offshore, y'all. My name's Steven, welcome to the channel with Bama Saltwater Fishing, and I will see y'all on the water. Y'all, so we just got to our spot offshore, about 50 feet. Northern Gulf of Mexico is pretty shallow out here, no matter how far you go. But see, we're sitting on top of a pyramid. There it is. And then those are the fish we're after. You see those bigger marks up top? Those are most likely trigger fish. That's probably a big old snapper. And then you see some bait there as well. So we're gonna drop down a whole squid because might as well. If you can only keep one trigger, you might as well try to catch the biggest one on the reef. I have the pinpoint anchor system going on the trolling motor and it's gonna put us back over this reef. See, we're marking a bunch of fish at 30 feet. We're in 50 feet. You wanna drop down to where the fish are. You don't always have to drop down to the bottom because typically a lot of these bigger fish will be up top because they're not necessarily afraid of being eaten by a bigger predator versus the real tiny babies. That one hit it pretty hard. What is this? 
I don't know what that is, but it's running out. Mm. What the heck do I have? Y'all, I don't know what this is. Oh, big shark! Big shark! That's huge! Well, I say huge, he's like eight foot long. I think that jig's probably gonna be a goner at this point. I don't know if I can get underneath the trolling motor. Mm. Yo, that's insane. I have a big shark on. Really big. I don't know if he grabbed my jig or if he grabbed the fish that had my jig. But that is crazy. I just saw him come shoot the boat. Wow. This jig seems to like sharks a lot. That's insane. As long as he doesn't get that leader in his mouth. This is gonna be a while. I can already tell you that. Come on, Daiwa and Star Rod. Put a whooping on him. Oh, yeah. This is stupid. <laughs> this isn't fun. <laughs> Not fun. It was for a second. If that's the black tip or spinner, he's a keeper. He's coming around the boat. There he is. Can you see him? Y'all see it? That's a big one. Look at that thing. It's a black tip. He would be a keeper too. Y'all wanna see a shark catch and cook? I love sharks, but this one might be worth keeping. Like I love sharks, I respect them, but there are a bunch of them out here. If I can get them up, I might need a bigger gaff. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna keep that thing. We're gonna do a shark catch and cook. Come here, come here. You big beast. Uh, hopefully I'm getting good footage of them. Mm, here he is. Oh, he's not happy. I don't blame him. Wow. Look at that. Mm, this is not going to be good. Get his head up. Okay, there he is. Y'all, we're gonna harvest this shark if I can get a hold of it with the gaff. I don't know how it's gonna work out. It's not gonna be pretty. I told you, it's not gonna be pretty. This isn't something I recommend to do on your own. He's right here. If I get him, I get him. If not, that's fine. Y'all, this is insane. Not, it was fun for a while. Now it's just like, <laughs> like either break me off or let me bring you on. <clears throat> This isn't your typical bait caster either. For like bass, these are heavy duty. This is a Daiwa Lexa bait caster, Star Plasma 2 slow pitch rod. Whew. Okay, we're back at my top shot. That's an FG knot connecting my 50 pound mono leader to my braid. Maybe if I can get him in the mouth, get my jig back, 
I don't know, legally you can harvest them in the state of Alabama. Got them. Okay. This is not gonna be fun. Holy crap. Here we go. Got him. Yeah. Oh, he's a spinner. He's a spinner shark. Okay, he's in the boat. This is actually, I was wrong. It's not a black tip. It's a spinner shark, which you're still allowed to keep a spinner shark too. So, whew. I gotta recover and I'll show you this fish. <laughs> That's insane. This is not gonna to go to waste and I'm legally allowed to harvest one of these sharks and they have to be 54 inches. And this shark makes it no problem. But this is actually a spinner shark. These are really cool. There's an overabundance of them, which is a good thing. That's why we're legally allowed to harvest them. I rarely keep sharks. So this will probably be the last one I keep in a long time and I hadn't kept one in a long time. But I was on the slow pitch jig. We're gonna get this sucker back as soon as we can i'm done fishing and get him to our cleaning table that is awesome look how wide his body is but this guy will put in some work with that star wow and there's my jig in his mouth so i'm going to cut that up and we're going to go ahead and head back and i'll show you this more close y'all made it back home so i went ahead and field dressed it anytime you catch a shark like this if you want to keep the meat fresh gut it immediately and then bury it in some ice and that's what i did look how beautiful this white meat is if you're ever unfamiliar with eating shark there actually is all cartilage there's no bones in there at all their skin is super super rough you could run your hand across like this all day long but as soon as you go back it's just like sandpaper it is super rough but i field dressed it removed the head I removed the tail just to make it more manageable. There's a lot of meat in the head that I want to save as well. But today, I have two knives here. This one's a sword serrated knife because you need that to really cut through the skin. You'll dull the heck out of your other one. And this is the nine inch flex fillet by sword as well. There'll be a link in the description down below if you want to go pick them up. Awesome fillet knives, that's all I use. Is last time I cleaned a shark, I had a fine tooth shark and I staked it out and grilled it, but I went through the top of the skin and that was not fun at all. So I think I'm gonna fillet this one out. So we're gonna start with our serrated knife. There's multiple ways of doing this. This is just the way I do it. If you have a different way, do it that way. But we're gonna fillet this out. Look how thick this meat is. There's no bones, that's all cartilage. Hear that? Doesn't sound like bone. Sounds like I'm hitting rubber. But that's what that is, it's cartilage, it feels like plastic. So we're gonna take this serrated and go through the top of this skin. So here we go. Oh yeah, that serrated's making a lot easier work than it was last time for me. Gonna take our time with it. Don't wanna waste any of this. This is a beautiful critter. I was blessed to be able to land it and I don't wanna waste any of this meat. It's all gonna go to good use. So see, I'm getting through this body. It's gonna go through the rest of it. All the way down this fish. Oh, I say fish, but this is a shark. It's in the shark family. Now I don't clean shark much. I don't keep them often at all. So I'm just taking my time and letting my knife do the work and not going too deep. There we go. So we got through the tough skin. Now we're gonna take our flexible sword. See it's flexible, it allows you to work around the cartilage or bone. And just fillet it just like I would anything else, really. So we're just going down. kind of pulling the meat away. 
and just carving it out. There we go. See that? There's its spine right there. Look at that. A lot of meat on these things. And hardly any red meat at all. This is very good looking fresh. I'm definitely not an expert when it comes to cleaning shark. But I think we're getting it done. Use that serrated to get through the rest of the skin back here. Now we have one side of this shark. Look at that. Thing's big. That's gonna feed a lot of people. A lot of people. So that is awesome. Look how thick that is. Let's finish this other side. I'm gonna put this on ice real quick. Now we have this belly meat. This is the bottom half of this shark. Look how thick that belly meat is. So I'm gonna take that serrated again and go through and get this belly meat off. Look at that big slab of stuff. That is awesome. Heck yeah. And all we gotta do is take this lining off. This is connective tissue or stomach lining. We'll take that off. Y'all know we have one side finished. Look at that spine. That's pretty neat. They're very flexible. I mean, extremely flexible. So it makes them kind of hard to deal with because they can really reach around and bite you pretty easily. You gotta have a healthy respect for them. I would say healthy fear, but you have to have a healthy respect because I don't really fear sharks, but I do love them and I do respect them. And that's why we're taking our time trying to not be wasteful. There's that fish's entire spinal cord. Look at that. Wow. It's pretty cool. So a lot of this meat's gonna go in the crab trap as well like this because I do want some fresh blue crabs. Now that it's in a more manageable piece, look at this. Doesn't that look good? It's time to flay it off the skin. They do have a little bit of bloodline going through the middle. And we're gonna kind of do like you would a tuna where you go through the middle of it and get that top loin and then that bottom loin. And now flay it off the skin. There we go. So one advantage of the skin being hard to cut through is if you take your regular knife, you can pull it right up against it. So now all I'm doing is just trimming off this red meat. That's it. And then we'll have a nice boneless or cartilage free filet of shark. So see all that bloodline? That won't taste good at all. So just trim it out. Don't want any of that in there. And now I'll go in the crab trap. Blue crabs love it. Now that's an awesome piece of meat right there that is hard to come by. It took some work getting it in and it's gonna be greatly appreciated by everyone that eats it. Let's cut this into manageable pieces, kind of like small pieces. I'm gonna do about a fist width. There we go. Looks good. And these can either go on the grill So that's all it is. You saw me flay it out, trim up the red meat. It's tough cleaning shark, but you can get it done if you have the right tools and patience. Serrated knife is practically a must for this type of cleaning. Or if you have like a cleaver, I know everybody in different countries clean them pretty quick. But I'm gonna finish this shark, making it into these bite-sized pieces, and I'll probably see y'all cleaned up and ready to eat or cook them. Y'all. Look at this, Orange Beach, Alabama, beautiful place. Empty boat trailer, that means the boat's launched. If you already know, you know. Y'all, Steve with Bama Saltwater Fishing, what is going on? I'm happy that y'all can join me today on this fishing trip. We're actually gonna head offshore, just on the other side of that beach right there. Maybe 20 miles, maybe 40, maybe 10, who knows? We'll see when we get out there. But y'all come step with me on the boat and let's get out there and have a good time. So we're gonna get this back out and get my other spreads back out and see what else we can get. So when putting my lures out, I like to put the 
one that's going to be the farthest back out first always make sure that ballyhoo is not spinning it's actually swimming well, you may have to adjust your speed depending on your rig different lures pull at certain speeds i like this chugger to be all the way back i actually lost a nice mahi on this one a little bit before that one bit but i want this at the very back of my whitewash now it's time to get my little duster rig out these are all weightless planer with the nylander out back out there we go the longer the leader from your planer the better see and that planer catches and if you want to have fun just start reeling the planer by itself i'm gonna keep this one short now we have all three out we're trolling in about 420 feet of water i'm just kind of working my way around this edge see those tight contour lines that's like a cliff around the water so that's what i'm doing is working around the edge you know i see something up here and i'm not for sure what it is something big that's floating i haven't seen it yet wow y'all this thing's smoke and drag mm. smoke and drag good lord what do y'all think it's gonna be? This might be a while. Huh. What an awesome, awesome bike. But this is gonna take forever to get this line back. I mean, forever. <sighs> haven't even seen it yet come on uh, this is awesome <laughs> if, if it's a wahoo that would be cool but dude it took almost half the school i've not seen seen it yet that was awesome and it was on the chugger too <sighs> come on how cool is that the gap is all the way back there how awesome is this there you go, be a right hander. Uh, yes! Uh. <laughs> See, I do not want to get bit by that thing. Dude, that is a stud! Woo! <laughs> oh my gosh! Y'all, so. I don't know how much of the fight that got it's because this dumb camera turned off so it was only this one i think this one was probably pointing down but i just caught my biggest wahoo ever and actually my first one so this is pretty sweet look at those teeth <laughs> wow that's a big big wahoo golly <laughs> check out the size of that wahoo good gracious that's a big, big fish. <laughs> Dude, I don't know how much he weighs. I'm gonna say 50, over 50 pounds probably. That thing's a stud. Oh my gosh. <sighs> and the dumb camera didn't want to pick up the fight on my head. Luckily this one was on. But uh, I'm gonna try to show you these teeth best I can. Look at that. Those are some razor, razor sharp teeth. Amazing eyesight. And these are one of the fastest fish that swim out here. Not the fastest, but one of them. This is insane. I can't believe I caught one this big. This is nuts. 
Never caught a wahoo this big in my life. One of the finest eating fish out there too. Look how thick this thing is. Wow. Razor sharp teeth. It's like a king mackerel in steroids except they taste so much better. And look at those stripes. How amazing is that? This thing is giant. Look at this swan float 50 miles out. I'm gonna fish around it first. See if there's another dolphin. Cause I just caught that wahoo. I wanna get back. Barely, not even fit in my 140 quart cooler. I'm not seeing much life under this. So we're gonna get them. We're gonna get this float and get it out of the water. There we go. Make sure we take it back with us and throw it in the garbage. Don't want this plastic floating around. There's already enough of it in the water as is. So let's bring this joker in. This is a big old swan flute. <laughs> it's kind of funny. I'm gonna have to pop it some. Okay. You know, this actually might work out because what I can do, oh man, that jig's in a good, is actually use this to cover up my wahoo. Oh golly, it's full of water. Okay, there. <laughs> it's kind of funny, but there we go. So, you never know what you're gonna see out here. Big old swan float. Hey, giant wahoo. And I'm gonna make my way back in. I wanna keep trolling so bad, but it, it, it is 520. I have about 50 miles to run back, so it's gonna be dark by the time I get back. Whew, what an epic trip so far. That was freaking cool. This is probably a very familiar sight to all of y'all that have been watching the channel. I know the screen and porch is crazy, but this has been an insane year. I hope you enjoyed watching the highlights. It's really hard to fathom that I've actually gone out there, hooked and caught all those fish that are in these videos, got it on camera and ate them. Like, it's just, it's just hard to fathom that. I can't believe it. It's a dream come true, being able to get out there, a lot of hard work, and I look forward to sharing more experiences and excitement with y'all going into 2024. The growth of the channel since I started back in August uh, 2020, I got out of the military in 2020, and then um, Hurricane Sally hit, messed up the house real bad, but I started my channel then. And uh, yeah, it's grown so much, and I look forward to the continued growth and sharing it with all of y'all. Y'all, we'll see y'all on the next Bama Saltwater Fishing video going into the new year. I can't believe we're in 2024, y'all. This is insane. But I appreciate each and every one of you. Could not do this without your support and our partners of the channel, and most importantly, the good Lord up above. I want to thank him. We'll see you on the next Bama Saltwater Fishing video. As always, I want to thank the good Lord up above for everything he does for us. We'll see you later.